Despite the Biden campaign's talking points or the hopes of some of his backers, the Tara Reid story is not going away anytime soon. New York Times media columnist Ben Smith agrees, tweeting, The thing about Reid's story, and many like it, is that media decision makers still operate under illusion they control whether it's a story. Why not shortcut the hand wringing and ask Biden to open his personal papers to inspection, which is where this is headed anyway. Ben joins us now via Skype to elaborate. Great to see you, Ben. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So just expand on, on your thoughts as articulated there in that tweet. Well, I think there's, you know, there's a sort of reflex that, you know, when I was at BuzzFeed, I used to always take advantage of where when a story kind of comes in from unconventional places, from people who don't fit an easy media mold, there's sort of a reflex in the legacy media to to hold back a bit, to not cover it. I think, you know, elements of that you can you can interpret that however you want. I'm not going to try to get into people's heads, but but inevitably a story goes from being something that you know you guys are talking about and um, the the intercept is breaking news on to something that is on the front page of my newspaper and on the evening news in the course of say like two to six weeks like you can sort of set your clock by it and I think in that in that period viewers are saying to themselves why isn't the mainstream media covering this and again I don't I'm not going to try to psychoanalyze why people are doing things but an obvious solution I have always thought would be to just cover it Right. I, I mean, that that seems, of course, obvious. And as we said, I mean, Tara actually spoke with The Daily Caller, my former employer, and she talked about how she'd been interviewed by places like ABC News and that producers had said that they just weren't interested in covering the story. And like you said, I mean, beyond psychoanalyzing it, I think it's just more what you pointed to in that tweet is the hubris of thinking that by not covering it, that you may have an impact on a desired political outcome. Do you think that that's what and it I, is? I thought, and I think yeah. maybe some people think that. I mean, I think, you know, I interviewed the Times editor-in-chief about this, and what he said in the context of the time makes, Times makes sense, which is, what can the Times add here? It's a deeply, you know, it's that we're going to be mm -hmm. really careful and take our time and, and tell the reader what we know. And, and that's what the Times did. And the Times is now, you know, pretty on it and cover, covering the story. To me, it's really surprising that TV networks just sort of haven't booked her yet. Right. Yeah. Well, and we covered here, Ben, there was a real sort of outrage online um, at Chris Hayes. I think it was the first segment that MSNBC has done on these allegations, certainly sort of the first big primetime segment. And, you know, to my ear, he covered in a very sort of honest and straightforward way. But the fact that it was covered at all outraged at least some portion of the MSNBC um, viewing audience. So you can understand why a lot of anchors out of self-preservation haven't wanted to tackle it. Yeah, you know, I think, yes. I mean, I do think Democrats broadly don't want to hear this, don't want to hear this story. And I think, you know, you guys also have an audience that wants to hear certain things and certain stories and perhaps sure. feel, it, feel an impulse to pander to them sometimes. And I do think that's what you're saying on MSNBC, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another thing that you pointed out, Ben, that was according to your sourcing, that Tara had actually been requested by Fox News multiple times and she'd been turning down those booking requests kind of tracks with what we'd heard as well. And that, by, I mean, I don't, I don't think you have the sourcing to back this up, but it, it seems that CNN or MSNBC had just not invited her for an interview on their program. And we interviewed her here, I think, 34 days ago. I think that, well, that one is particularly remarkable to me. Yeah, you know, I mean, here's, I think, the thing that I worry about and that I'm writing about today and slightly annoyed that, that, that your thing may air before my column goes up, but what can you do? <laughs> um, is that, you know, when, when a per, when, you know, in, in particular, when it's a woman, you know, accusing someone of sexual assault, and the example that comes to mind for me is Juanita Broderick, goes to the media and, and has standing, as Dean Bacay said, has a, you know, has, you don't have to believe her, but you should listen to her. Um, and doesn't kind of, and says, I'd like to talk to the mainstream American media about this. And for whatever reason, doesn't get listened to. There's this danger that, you know, she's going to go to the only people who will listen to her, which are people with a really sharp partisan agenda. And her story then becomes kind of turned into a weaponized political fact rather than a set of specific allegations about something that happened. And I think to some degree that always happens in American politics, that everything is weaponized. But I think that the media can try to hold that center and say, hey, look, our job here is just to kind of figure out what happened and let the chips fall where they may. And that's, I think, the, the role that I hope they'll play. Yeah. Um, hello to whoever just yes. walked into the room. 
<laughs> um, another question for you on this. So New York Times published their piece, um, you know, thoroughly reported, et cetera, uh, the one that you spoke to Dean McKay about. It did not come to a conclusion over whether or not what Tara Reid says happened actually happened because how could you possibly ultimately know specifically whether that happened or not? Biden campaign, however, was passing around talking points. This is according to your old outlet, BuzzFeed News, um, telling their surrogates to say that the Times looked into this and found it did not happen. Um, your colleagues didn't seem too pleased with that. Just um, respond to those developments, if you would. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, I think the Biden yeah, I, the Biden campaign tried to use this time story, which said, as a good story says, here's what we know, here's what we don't know, and tried to say, you know, that evidence of absence is, or, you know, whatever that that phrase is, tried to <laughs> sort of use it in a way that, that seemed definitive. I mean, it's very hard to prove a negative. Right. Yeah, it, it certainly is. So I think, you know, all you can really do in a story like this is report really hard. And I think there's lots more reporting to be done. I know that's what my colleagues are doing. Yeah, well, thank you, Ben, as always, for updating us on this story. And you've been on top of it from the very beginning, so thank you. Great to see you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Next on Rising, for the first time in 30 years, Nancy Pelosi has a Democratic challenger in the, in the general election. Our conversation with Shahud Buttar, that's when Rising returns. <laughs> 